<laughs> when last we left our intrepid adventurers... <laughs> they had agreed to a terribly dangerous suicide mission that would help rid this Engi sector of the terrible ship-devouring Vokar. Wait, we 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 agreed to it? Hang on, hang on. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did actually agree to, we... to it because it was giving us a ship. Oh, really, well. there's no other way we would have done the suicide thing because I'm not a fan of suicide. I like my character. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. And I really have not set up any way to pass the it's kingship more... of Atlantis on to my heirs. So It's more dramatic that way. If we start off by saying the party has agreed to a suicide mission, like then the other is like, <laughs> It was like well, mission. Agreed to a suicidal mission that I actually have a chance of surviving. Okay. But like, my objective is not walk up to Alien Queen, stab myself in the face, and say, ha ha, <laughs> I win. Uh, of course, if I can survive in vacuum to get face to face with the Alien Queen mothership. That, thing, be, that would I, be I, threading a song about. I mean, I'd be at least impressed with myself. I would be impressed with yourself. All right, Phil is finally back, and we're finally ready to win. We have established that the mission we agreed to was suicidal, not suicide. <clears throat> Wait, but, but we did I, agree to this win, because I don't remember that. We agreed well, to this part of the negotiations that we got the better ship before we did the mission. See, it's this ship. Well, actually, hold on, let me put it in the Google Hangouts. A bigger one. Oh, A bigger one. That one. That one. That one. That one. <laughs> All right, that one. <laughs> Hold on, let me put it up in the Google Hangouts. Have I done this yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Here it is. Here's your new ship. Okay. So, some Ooh. very important things are about to happen. Uh, looks suspiciously like the Millennium Falcon. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, this is the ship that the, uh, ad that the Admiral, or the Vashkai, rather, of this, uh, of the Hammer of Oids? Gore? Hammer of, what's the name of the fleet? The, of the fleet uh, <clears throat> has agreed to give you. It is a tier two ship. It is a Sparrowhawk class cutter, the type of uh, ship that is often used by uh, blockade runners, um, smugglers, etc. Uh, as such, it comes with a few special abilities that you should make note of. Ooh. Oh, um, I'll start typing some of these things as I say them into the Google Hangouts. Um, it has 15 hull. Um, it has four hard points. It comes equipped with 20 fuel. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> For 20! <Oops>. For 20! <laughs> uh, it comes equipped with zero missiles. And zero drones. However, it... Them. It has some special abilities. Because it is a blockade runner, it gives you plus one uh, plus one evasion against capital ships. Uh, it's any any ship with a capital letter in the in the name, right? Uh, no. <laughs> nice try. It also has a smuggling compartment. Ooh. Which will allow you the obvious closet on the design there. Which will allow you four hundred. Which will allow you an extra hidden space in which you can fit four hundred pounds of stuff. Four hundred pounds. Well, you're talking about a spaceship here. I mean, you. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you heard that, but that was good. Did oh! you hear that? <laughs> well played. <laughs> That was good. That was good. <laughs> Alrighty. Listen. I dubbed the ship the Century Falcon. Score one for Century Gabby. Hawk. Century Hawk. Wait, I'm not done with the special abilities. Oh. Okay, I'm just saying. You can't uh, it also joint, joint, joint. It also has an extra system. A defense style, a defense uh, cannon. That can be used, uh, Just it's just a copy of the Millennium Falcon's a little extra cannon in Episode 5. You're really making a mad case for this not being the Millennium Falcon. Listen, I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, it's obviously it's, shaped differently it's and it's totally colored red. It's not the Millennium Falcon. It's way better. It's going to be way bigger. It's, it's <laughs> way better than the Millennium Falcon. It's, it's 
best. I had the best Absolutely ship designers work the on best. this. The best people uh, working on it. The best I, I people are going to be this, on board. But, uh, most ships don't the have a hull. It's going to run so does. many blockades. More blockades <laughs> than anyone before. It's going to run so many blockades you can't even you can't even imagine how many blockades it's going to run. <laughs> it's going to be the best. I just a lot of people are saying so it's going to run it's all the blockades. The a lot of people are saying all the blockades are going to get run. We're worried. <laughs> That's just the way it's going to be. That's just the way it's going to be. The defense cannon requires <laughs> one power to use. <laughs> you cannot use it unless you have one power in it and it only works for Small targets in Atmo when you're landed. It's not useful against other ships. So, what about small targets in Atmo when we're not landed? <laughs> like if I, if I fly by a bird, what about and shoot it out of the air because I'm feeling addicted about that particular um, bird when we're on my not screen. in Atmo and uh, also are landed. <laughs> oh my word. Uh, like, for magnetic, not a powerful enough laser the back to, of a, to uh, do damage a, a to a ship. Stellar smack. If you are shooting and at something that is space worthy, trash. this There's cannon trash will not away. do any damage to it. I agree. I think we should <laughs> definitely verify oh, when and where it will work, just in case it comes in handy. But I, what, what are the conditions that Listen, require you'll it to ask be me and I will say no. The landing gear has actually Activated? Oh my land! I will totally fly with the wheels down if it means I get to shoot my pew pew blaster. <laughs> it will literally do no damage. It's literally a plot laser. Small oh, bird. okay, plot laser. Well, you should have said something. <laughs> now I gotta edit the character sheet. All right. Well, listen. The important thing is that while that you are in the middle of transferring things over to this ship uh, when this session begins because uh, the Vashkai well, the admiral of this, as this sorry session begins is just telling you about how the Vokar mothership travels through space by somehow opening wormholes even though they don't know how it works when an officer gives him alert <clears throat> that the mothership has opened a wormhole to your location alert. Oh, alarm bells alarm bells sound massive combat incoming someone alert. yells all hands, battle stations. All hands, battle stations. To the plot laser. Wait, all then, hands, all stations. Battle stations. Battle stations. Thank you. Sorry, so, I was like, I'm the Vashkai turns to one of his lieutenants. My hands upon the battle. The Vashkai turns to one of his lieutenants. This is impossible. How did she open a wormhole here? And they said, "Sir, we're contacting the interdictor cruiser. I think they forgot to turn off the artificial war uh, gravity well generator." <laughs> Make sure when they try to run away, they also don't have the parking brake on. In a moment, in a flash, the Vokar mothership appears out of nowhere and immediately mass lashes its massive jaws onto one of the capital ships and starts chewing it. It has jaws? How do you think it eats stuff? It, <laughs> it eats, eats stuff? <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole concept of these aliens. They eat ships, remember? Oh, and, uh, I, I mean, I sort of remember that. that. I, I, remember summon, the jaws. I summon bigger ship. <laughs> Some of the bigger shit. <laughs> right, well, here's the problem. If you keep that up, you're eventually going to wind up with something so big it creates its own singularity. Um, here's the problem. Uh, half of half of your stuff wait, wait, is wait, on the Durango. Stop, stop. You're going to tell me that a, a enemy mothership just warped into the system, started eating an, a capital ship, and that's not our problem. Our problem well, is something else <laughs> that you're about okay. to say. Specify, is the capital ship the one we're on? No. We're we're on okay, see, so it's somebody else. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fair. I think I, I think I remember saying that there were three other capital ships with, um, in addition to the the flagship of this fleet. I think I remember you saying there were seven. Uh, your face your remembers wrong, and so it's it's currently latching on one of those. And have you been practicing that? Yeah, I've really been working on that one. And the problem is that half of your crew and half of your actually half of your stuff. Sorry, half of your stuff is still on the Durango. It hasn't all been transferred over. Hmm. That could be problematic. So, um, your 
the only weapon you currently have equipped is the quad say, laser. On your Sparrowhawk class cutter is the quad laser. Okay. We'd like to fire some flocks nice. at the end. That one attached first because it's the best. Um, which let me just quick look that up. Uh, one damage per shot, and you it shoots what four times? Four yes, shots. four shots. Has a cooldown of five turns. So that weapon is equipped to your Sparrowhawk class cutter. Um, your uh, the Durango uh, unfortunately oh, only has the ion beam and the mini beam because the heavy laser has just been detached. Um, and uh, the cloaking system is also in transit. <sighs> or it's it's or as far as we know, it in, is. In transit. <laughs> they've, they've so lost you it. all die. Surprise! Hi, Gabby. We think it's in transit. We, we hope so, as long as somebody hasn't... Um, as long as somebody hasn't lost it. So you won't be able to use your cloaking, you won't be able to use your heavy laser, and you have two ships to command against the Vokar mothership and her entourage, as it were. Bye. Let's take over one of the capital ships, and then Ooh, we have three ships And then we have three ships, and one of them is a capital ship. So we well, I will say that the other... If we shoot it <laughs> ourselves. By shooting at us, we can dodge. And if we do it right, we can dodge so that the shots hit the alien mothership. Brilliant plan. No flaws. No flaws. All right. So the mothership and a number of other vo smaller Vokar ships are now doing battle with the Zoltan fleet. Um, and it's... Uh, not going well for the for the for the Zoltan. Um, so for this combat, what we'll do is basically you will have a turn, and then all other combatants will have a turn. I've got a system to just sort of to make a couple quick rolls and to figure out what happens, so that we won't have I to worry about. I was really hoping you had such a system. What? Yes, I have such a system. I actually, in one of my first ever sessions as a DM, I, I ran a I ran a, a massive like a large scale combat, and it actually went extraordinarily well. Oh, we'll see okay. if this one goes as well. So, in the first couple of seconds of in the first couple of minutes of you getting back to your ships, the um, the Vokar are, are sort of overwhelming the Zoltan because they sort of have the element of surprise. Uh, I will let you choose which ships you go to, but I will say at the moment, um, let's see, Amy is on the Durango, Stephen and Albert is on the new ship. Uh, Sladen is on the new ship. I am on the new it's ship. Called the Epigraph and Amy is alone on the old ship. With the diffused consciousness of Moda. Yes. Yes. Let me I'll write all that down. The Durango and Phil can go. Or, excuse me. On the new ship! Voltron can go on the Epigraph. I will not get a scratch on it. The that's okay. Raptor. We'll just call it the Raptor. Oh, uh, it's important that it has the epic in it because otherwise nobody knows what a deliberate rip of the Millennium Falcon it is. Thank you. Thank you, honey. You're the best. You're welcome. Our DM is distracted. Quick, activate awesome things. Uh, Quick, activate the awesome thing. All right. Oh, hey, I so, found a new thing in my inventory while you were away, Stephen. You wouldn't we believe fun. what they left on board this ship. Yeah, you would not believe what we found. All right. It's a, it's a device that says to kill all aliens. Push button. It's actually a small wooden box. Um, and I'll I already have you, I'll tell you what's in it next time when I open it. So... Because your Sparrowhawk class cutter has more engine capacity, it gets to go first. But yes. you're gonna have to. It's the epic you're gonna have to decide, decide how to how to um, how to uh, allocate. Um, allocate your power because the power has not been turned on for this ship yet. So you're gonna have to spend Is your first time. Keto? How much power do we have? Maybe. Um. We start out. I know you have four hearts. We start points. out with twenty, right? You start out with sixteen. 20 is the max for a tier 2 ship. Uh, uh, consider, though, that if you're, like, your quad laser will take 2 power. So, if you have... Quad laser takes one. Any, two, any two, uh, tier 2 weapon takes 2 power. 
So if you have that thing full up with four tier two weapons, that's eight points of power right there. Gotcha. But right now you only have one weapon on there, the quad laser, which takes two power. Is it a um, level one just, ship right now? Level one tier no, two it's ship? a it's a tier two ship, so it's level ten. Level ten, gotcha. No missiles. That's okay. Fuel twenty. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yep. Now you have fifteen oh, max. You have max capacities for the number of power you can put into the ship. Five points four. I mean, in each system, each system has a max. Okay. Power. All right. Let me just look at what we got here. We've got basically all you got to choose between is. Shields, weapons, and engines. Because right now the cloaking isn't on there yet. There's, but there's also the defense cannon. So you're probably gonna. So I'm guessing you're gonna want to put two into quad laser. Of course. And then you As pretty much at, at this point you can distribute the rest between shields and engines. So we're putting two into weapons because we don't have any other weapons on anyway. Yeah. Makes sense. Fair enough. Um, and we have 16 total? 16 total. However, you also have maxes to the shields and the engines. So you can only put 8 into the engines, and you can only put 5 into the shields. Let's put 8 in the engines and 5 in the shields. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> right? Solid, solid. Um, let me see. That's only 15. Let's put one in the plot laser just for shits and giggles. Yeah, I, I mean, know what you might need to shoot while you're still landed in ammo. Actually, we haven't taken off yet. I can still shoot uh, Wilberforce. No, you can't because I'm back on the Durango prepping it for takeoff. This is true. You are. All right. Unfortunately, it takes you an entire turn to get the new Sparrowhawk ship up and running. Um, the mean? Epic Raptor. All right, and that's what we're gonna call it, the Epic Raptor. That's fine. Which means, um, while I was sitting in port, everybody else destroyed it from space. Ah. Which means it's the Durango's turn. Don, you're on the Durango, yeah. <coughs> Wilberforce is on the Durango. Excuse me, Wilberforce is on the Durango. Yeah. So wait, I. Launch. You what? I launch from the ship that I'm docked on to see what's going on outside in the hopes that I get not eaten by a gigantic capital ship devouring mothership. Would you like to charge your weapons? Of course. Right. Charge all of my weapons. Yeah. In your first turn? And my shields. Mm. Shouldn't have to be said, but I am anyway. Right. Well, if you don't say it, I can say you didn't say it. Just say <laughs> And your first ship, turn your eyes up, and to see the battle, it is fierce. The other smaller Vokar, the smaller Vokar aliens seem to be urged on, mo motivated by the prowess of their queen, who is currently devouring the front half of a Zoltan uh, capital ship, which is furiously firing against the mothership. Uh, I poke it in the eye. Well, your uh, weapons are not charged yet. Can I? Can I do that? Actually, can I make a called shot for the mothership's eye? A called shot for the mothership's eye? Um, you'd have to roll a natural twenty. Bear in mind that we have Modar diffused through the systems. And Modar cannot man systems when he's diffused through the systems. He can but monitor them. Can increase their efficiency. Uh, can he though? I almost had him. No. <laughs> nice try. I You'll have to do that. And other you'll... members of my party are undermining my own attempt to manipulate the DM. You would have to be manning the systems. All right. Bye. Bye. Combat. Hmm. The Zoltan are effectively able to rally, although they lose several small fighters. Zoltan. Uh, sorry. Uh, Oops. Uh, Voltron. Your turn. Yes. Um, I Zoltan would like to buy a vowel. All right. Um, 
<laughs> I, I assume the natural leadership of the epic raptor and place myself in the, not in the pilot's chair, as you might think, but rather in the weapons bay where I am skilled and can provide the most help. Um, it is a good decision. Let's see. I've got Stephen Albert and Aaron Sladen. Yep. Neither of which have any particular skills in any areas. Um, so I put Lawrence in the driver's seat and Stephen Albert in the engines compartment. It is worth noting that Kaylee is in the engine compartment. Kaylee's in the engine compartment? Uh, she's in your ship, though. Right. The old one. Right. Because she's I'm very ass- good at engines. I'm assuming, uh, then, Jericho, that you're going to be in the pilot's chair. Uh, yeah. I, uh, For now. I run a full diagnostics check on the new ship, making sure there are no instabilities in any of the systems. Um, that's going to take some time. I, I mean, you can queue, you can queue it up, but it's going to take some time. I run a full... It's going to take this turn. <laughs> it's going to take this turn to queue it up, but it's going to... But you can run a full diagnostics. All I have to do is push a button to run the full well, diagnostics check. And the computer yeah, it takes five seconds yeah, to push it. executes over button, time. But it takes a long time for it to execute. Right. So I mean, I don't I know if you've ever done a full diagnostics, diagnostics check on, like, your face. I start the diagnostics check. Which you probably should, because it's ugly. Hey. <laughs> and at the same time, begin routing power to the shields and the weapons um, to make sure everything is charged up and ready to go before we take off. Okay. Uh, you're going to have five power in the shields, which means you'll have four shielding, and eight power in the engines, which is currently your max, uh, which means you'll be at... Uh, eight powering. <laughs> um, uh, two, four, six. So you'll have plus four to your dodge, which is insane. Yeah. And plus Stephen Albert's yeah. in the engine room, so I think that gives it plus one, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, just having somebody there gives you a plus one. All right. Yeah. Um, Somehow. Uh, the Durango. Jericho, it's your turn. Woohoo! Are any of my weapons charged yet? Uh. No. But your ion is. Your ion beam is charged for. Ne- you can fire it next turn. Okay. Good to you know. And your main I... walls. They'll both be ready simultaneously next, next okay. turn. Okay. What is the uh, current disposition of forces outside in space? Um. Outside in space, the fight is uh, scattered. With the the Zoltans seem to be starting to uh, spread their fighters as thinly as possible to just to get the Vokar into a sense of disarray, so they stay away from the main uh, capital ships. As I said earlier, the Queen is totally focused on the one giant capital ship that she's got her jaws around. Uh, it looks like it's going to take her a while to get through that ship, but she's definitely like, ah, like she's definitely chewing on it. Um, Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, this, the smaller Vokar aliens are zipping around, attempting to eat and shoot their spore weapons at the various small Zoltan fighters. But it, it looks like the fleet will probably be you know, a little outnumbered if, if nothing else happens. Okay. So, um, I'm going to try and what other forces are there are they all like fighter size midship oh. size yeah so there's the mothership and then there are voker fighters bombers and runners so the runners are the ones that are really really fast mm-hmm. the bombers i don't know if you faced a bomber yet the bombers are the ones with the missile weapons and the fighters are the really really tiny ones don't they all i want to blow up though? a bomber um, the fighters the are bombers. too small, and the runners can only things. Uh, the bombers, so the fighters are too small to eat anything. The runners could eat, like maybe they could eat a fighter if it's a small, like some does fighter. The bombers, a small horse. <laughs> like the Vokars, the Vokars could maybe eat like a tie fighter. Or sorry, the runners. The runners could maybe eat a Tie Fighter. Okay. The bombers. There are any could, Tie Fighters in this universe? The bombers could potentially eat the Durango. Oh. They would have to sit there and chew on it for a while, but uh, they could definitely eat it. 
And it would I want to blow up a bomb. Oh, definitely. Well, it depends on the inhabitants of said Durango. Like I said. Right. So, next Ouch. turn, so Don, <laughs> next turn you'll be able to fire. Next turn, I'm going to zap a bomber so it... All right. Oops, uh, so. Do it. Massive combat round. Hmm, let's see. How did you get to go? The, the yes, Vokar gained the advantage, taking out a number of small Zoltan fighters without sustaining any significant losses. Um, so that brings us to the, I guess we're calling it the epic... Um, raptor. Epic Raptor. Epic E-P-O-C-H, uh, for the record. Yeah, make sure you spell that right. Um, epic Raptor. Epoch Raptor. Um, so... I'm assuming that the diagnostic check is done and we can start launching this turn. Is that correct? I call up to the bridge. Lawrence, how's that diagnostics check going? Uh, he says, <laughs> he says, I've got a, um, I've got a dialogue window open here that, um, look, I'm kind of distracted by flying the ship right now. <laughs> Why are we flying? We should still be docked running the diagnostics check. Why? Have... <laughs> we need you out here. You weren't supposed he to says, take off, oh. Lawrence. He says, he says, Slayton has already launched his ship into battle. Oh, NPCs will be the death of me. Okay. Fortunately, the ship is equipped with a diagnostic system that can run during battle. Unfortunately, it takes approximately 30 or 40 minutes. Oh, thank God that in 30 or 40 minutes after the battle is over, we'll know whether or not the ship was ready for battle. Good, good plan, Lawrence. Good idea. Lawrence says, hey, I know a Lawrence, much quicker way to discover if the ship's ready for battle. Lawrence, <laughs> Lawrence is like, to battle! Lawrence says, Lawrence says, Lawrence has discovered that the Vokar seem to be taking optimism and energy from the, the Queen's success. Lawrence recommends that we take out the Queen first. <sighs> Lawrence, you. you're sure. full sure of great pocket. ideas today, as we can already tell. Um, oh, and one more turn, you'll be able to fire your clock. It? So, it was your idea to have this guy as part of our party. Here's a thought. Um, what's the uh, estimated odds of survival of the crew of this capital ship right now? Like, are they? Is the whole ship vented to atmosphere? Would you Would you like to ask G? Would you like to ask Jeeves that? <laughs> Jeeves is on the other ship, I think, isn't he? Um, if I can, I yes. Say where are droids? How, Sorry, uh, how... Jeeves. Is, yes, Jeeves is on the Durango. Both of the droids are on the Durango. How vented is the capital ship, and like, how likely is everybody to survive? Are you asking Jeeves? Yes. Um, he says, at the moment, I have insufficient uh, insufficient data to make a proper assessment. However, I believe that the Zoltan uh, countermeasures are working effectively to save as much of the crew as possible. Ah, they have bad. already launched a number. They have already launched, launched a number of lifeboats, but it appears that most of the command crew, including the captain, will likely go down with the ship. I send a message to the captain of this command ship that's being eaten. Um, I don't know what name it is. I say, hey, Mr. Zoltan, I understand that Let's it's go a in. thing in your culture to like go down with the ship and all that, but I have this great idea. Is it? What if, just saying, <laughs> what if you all evacuate and like blow the ship's reactor core while the thing is eating it and then like the whole big giant space monster will explode what do you think of that idea um your hail is not returned <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a, there is a frenzy of activity the ship is firing fury the ship is firing as furiously as it can at the mothership, uh, the Vogar mothership, but uh, your hail is not returned. I hail them again. Listen, I know you're angry. <laughs> I can see by how they you're shooting. They might be a little busy fighting for their life, what, dude. what if you just drop the core and peace out? I mean, get out there, <laughs> drop the core, and then, like, little boomies happen inside the queen. <laughs> Splodies happen. Everybody's happy. Make sense? I call their engineering department. Like, hey, get everybody off the ship and blow the core. Do it. All that you hear in response is sounds of utter chaos. Uh. Zoltan voices yelling at the top of their lungs. Not a lot of chaos. Ah, blah, blah, blah. 
That's why they're losing. They're <laughs> trying to fight a battle in chaos. No wonder they're getting eaten. Actually, I think they're trying to fight a battle inside of a ship. Um, yeah, no kidding. Specifically an alien oh, devourer well, of ships. They just attempted to reverse thrusters, but uh, something that they somehow... I don't know how else to explain this. They um, somehow a botch. The, so something that the queen has done has disrupted their fuel lines, and the engines abruptly stopped working. Uh, it's too bad that the fuel line disruption couldn't have also accidentally started an enormous fire. Uh, uh, Jericho, you turn on the Durango, you can fire your ion and your mini-beam if you'd like. I Notice would like. Term, Does it my turn has summarily come to a very abrupt end. <laughs> yes. Take as a free action. Uh, but sending so hail... Sending hails is not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was worth a shot, um, I guess. I locate the nearest bomber. Do these things appear to have shields of any sort? Uh, they don't have shields. None of them have shields. Good. I'm going to blast it with the ion and then rip it in half with the mini beam. You're going to shoot the Vulcan bomber? Yes. Hey, hey, look. Okay. Go for it. Pew, pew. You have to roll. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's you do have to roll. I rolled a 17. A 17. That's good enough to hit with the ion beam. Um, the ion beam splashes across the Vokar doing apparently nothing. What? How do they not have nervous systems? They don't have shields. Maybe they're not run with electricity. Uh, ion shots do things to things without shields. They do? Systems. Would you um, have a shot system with the ion beam? Have I ever shot what with an IMB? All systems also wrong. An FTL. Yeah, uh, and so it's neurological impulses. Yeah, maybe maybe yours do. Yeah, yours do too. Uh, I'm the bomber I'm is not a Vokar. That was what I'm moment. Thinking. The Vokar is momentarily discombobulated. <laughs> I'll take it. Now that it's discombobulated and has a harder time dodging, we will just shred it with the mini beam. Ah, well, unfortunately, your mini beam is currently being run by a computer, and the computer only manages I to do. I hit with the first one. What? You I had me roll. Remember, mini beams, you don't roll, you roll intelligence. I'm smart. <laughs> yeah, but you're not <laughs> only if you're, the weapon. Only if you're manning the weapon, uh, and it does two out of the max three damage. Not bad. Our bomber. We need to upgrade the AI. Or we would need to upgrade the yeah. AI if we were going to keep that ship. It's true. Well, I cinched it. It'll think twice about messing with the Durango. Indeed, it will. Alright. Uh, massive combat round. Oh dear. Uh, the Vokar are winning. Um... The large capital ships have, have have turned their attention to the mothership, but the smaller Vogar runners and bombers seem to be mopping up the uh, uh, the Zoltan fighters. A little too quick for comfort. Uh oh. So, you uh, you Voltron, Voltron, your turn, and next turn you'll be able to follow the fire the quad lasers. Next turn I'll be able to fire the quad lasers. I attempt to hail the other capital ships in the fleet. <laughs> And say something to the effect of, "Have your people blow the reactor core on that ship that's inside the mothership's gullet. Maybe it will blow it apart." <coughs> and then I say, uh, you see, you "Also, continue to focus fire on the mothership. It appears uh, to be somehow you're... telekinetically adding morale to its forces." Uh, you are responded to with nothing but the sounds of battle. <laughs> Fortunately, the uh, <clears throat> local Zoltan actually do have a tactical commander. Yes, they do. <laughs> and thus, they don't need you. Well, what am I supposed oh, to do? Like, I've only got one weapon, and it's got a five-turn recharge. We could try ramming something. You just said you wouldn't get a scratch on it. Oh, this is good. This is not gonna be a scratch, man. I'm gonna have parts hanging off. <laughs> right. Uh, 
Jericho, you haven't even christened it yet. Carry on. <sighs> well, since it'll be a couple of turns before I'm recharged, I guess I'm going to commence explosion dodging. Commence explosion dodging. Uh, massive combat round. Oh, my lanta. Uh, several of the smaller Vokars fly directly into one of the rather large beams emanating from one of the capital ships intended for the mothership. Uh, they perish, saving their queen. However, you also notice that the capital ships are able to do a, s a certain amount of damage to the mothership. She's visibly right. shaken, and her and her attention seems to be momentarily shaken from her uh, her singular uh, her singular goal of eating the ship in front of her. She lashes out an enormous tentacle. <laughs> it slams into the side of one of the capital ships. Whoa. Cutting directly, cutting a hole in its in its hull. Uh, furthermore, you are both fired upon by Vokar bombers. Uh, so and the one that's shooting enough... at me is discombobulated. Uh, it's a different one. There are multiple of them. Sure. They're both good enough to hit, so you're going to have to roll for dodge. Okay, well, Lawrence is okay. in the cockpit, so you get to roll for him. I have... Uh, yes. I have a 12 dex, which gives me plus one. I have a point in navigation, which gives me an additional plus one. Your main I have console. six engines. Which gives you a plus and one. And your main I'm... console. Because Kaylee is also made of weapons. And your evasive maneuvering. I'm at like a plus 92. I think six. Um, plus six. Sounds right. And I rolled a 15. So a total of 21 to Yaj. You dodge incredibly well. Uh, unfortunately, um, Slayton rolls an 8, and he's only at a plus 5. Which Jesus, means he wait, does not... Wait, wait, Don't we have a plus 4 from the engines? And plus 1 for Manning. And someone's in the engine room, like Stephen Albert's in the engine room, too. Oh, that's for the en that helps for the engine dodge. Albert can attempt to roll for the engine dodge. Okay. And he's at a plus one. Oh, wait. Hold on. What am I doing? The engine bonus only counts for the engine dodge. Oh. 18, 17, 18, which means he does it. Yes. All right. Dr. Stephen Albert. He rolled a 13. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let's see. Voltron, it is your turn, and the quad lasers are all ready to go. I take a bead on that thing that dangles down in the back of your throat on the mothership as it's chomping away. That and currently I, has an allied cruiser sitting in its whole I'm mouth. A, I'm a good shot. It opens its mouth when it shoot. ever so slightly every time it takes a bite. And I get an, I can, you can see all the way down there if you're in the right place. And I say, Lawrence, hold her steady! <laughs> Lawrence, hold her steady. Lawrence, hold her steady. And, Lawrence, I, for this session. and oh. I squeeze off all four rounds. Make a roll. Oh, I hope you get a 20. I, I roll the nine. If you don't. A nine. Which, That's see. good enough to hit. I sent across her nose, not up it. <laughs> oh, oh wait, I rolled the wrong uh, die. You do. That's okay, you still do four damage to the mothership. Good enough. Roll a d12. Maybe. <laughs> you should go back to the digital roller. I was holding both of them for some reason. I rolled a, six. Jericho, you're I rolled a 16 on the d20, so... And I was at like... Plus your reaction to use the communications channel that we always have open whenever we're doing multi-ship engagement. I just uh, I just wanted to like add a handicap to make it to make myself seem more awesome. Which I, hey, I am, by the and way, I feel like it's very effective. Remember that you have to do all the manual aiming when I'm not flying the ship. So actually pay attention to where the target reticle is. Excuse me, I always do all of the manual aiming. You're flying... Well, I fly the ship to point what you're aiming at. Yeah, okay, sure. Most of the time you're trying to dodge stuff. 
because and your I'm positioning very good at in it. the battle was bad. That's why we're always doing evasive right. maneuvers, so we don't get hit by right. the enemy. How am I supposed Jericho, to... Do you have any turn. idea how difficult it I makes that to shoot? Explosion <laughs> Continue explosion dodging. Massive combat round. Oh, goodness. The queen is mad. Um, she lashes out in several directions at once, and you notice they sh a number of what look like spawnlings are now running down the tentacle that she has attached to one of the capital ships. Oh, dear. Um, shoot the mainlings! Shoot the mainlings! Uh, shoot the tentacles. And she fires off a number of projectiles in different directions, um, which look sort of like the bone mis bone missiles that Vokar bombers fire, only they're bigger. Oh. Um, and she fires one of them at the Durango, which misses horribly. Ooh. But the one she fires at the Epic Raptor is a natural 20. Oh dear. Which means she do not get to dodge. Judging disabled. Bring it on! Judging, rod, judging disabled by virtue of epic success. Um, Direct hit. Direct hit on the, let's see. Shields on the shields. Um, hold on. Two, we have, three, four, we, we five, have six, seven, eight. Okay. Nine. Ah, rats. Blast. It hits the cargo bay. Uh, it does um, two damage and spawns a breach in the cargo bay. Don't we have shields on this, this, this ship? <laughs> uh, it's a missile. It has oh, yeah, shield pierce, remember? Shields, yeah. It's the cargo bay. Which one is that? Uh, oh, sorry. I should say the cargo bay on your ship is the one on the top left. Okay, great. Gotcha. So, the big 3x3 three three square one? Yeah, the big 3x3 three three, three square one. That is your cargo bay. Is which means you can there? hold nine nine tons of stuff. Yeah, there's a breach in the top. Yeah, there's a breach in the top left. Or, sorry. There's a breach in the... Uh, there's a breach in the bottom right square of that. Okay, group. but it's not like... No fires. No fires, just but a just gigantic ignore breach. ignore it. I just completely ignore it. Pretend it didn't happen. Hey, you do what you want. Okay. She rolled a 20. She rolled a natural 20. Uh, but I'll it is your turn. Stephen Albert fix Ultra. it later. I, Ultra, it is your turn. I start recharging the lasers because they take forever. Ooh, 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 I have a great idea. I have a great idea. What if you landed on the tendril and used the plot laser to shoot now the Now you are talking like an idiot again. That's what I like to hear. Let's try landing on the tentacle. How uh, Slayton's going to have to make a pilot roll. Hey, well, how thick are these tentacles? Uh, it's really thick. Oh, so like we can land on them, not like we can fly through them and just snap them. Um... If you try to fly through it, you'd probably wreck the ship. Okay, so let's not do that. It's like... Um, wow, he said something sensible. It's maybe not quite big enough to land on, but the spawnlings aren't ships, so technically your defense laser cannon would damage them. Ha! We fly very close to the tentacle, but don't land on it. And... Extend the landing gear and fire the plot laser at the spawns. Yes! <laughs> You're gonna have to make a weapons roll. A weapons roll? Brilliant! I'll make sure that I die this time. Firing plot laser. 14. 14. Um, they have limited space to dodge because they're rolling along the tentacle. Um, uh, Please tell me I blow one up and it severs the tentacle. Interestingly, the first one that you fire at is smart enough to, like, scurry around to the underside of the tentacle and keep going, but the second one gets blown away. Yes! yes. It explodes like a zerg, like, into space. And doesn't do any noticeable damage to the tentacle? Well, you shot at the at the spawn line, not at the tentacle. It blew, it blew up while it was on the tentacle, right? The oh yeah no it didn't do any damage to the tentacle. Okay. Next it didn't. Round, yeah, it's not a bandling. Next round, next round, I'll try shooting the tentacle. You should shoot I, the tentacle with the quad laser. Um, Jericho, it is your turn. I'm thinking about it. Hooray! Is my ion recharged? Uh, your ion is 
Ready to fire. Both are ready to fire. Dude, mini beam uh, tentacles. Mini beam fire at damaged bomber. You're gonna fire the island at the damaged bomber? Uh, yeah. Mini beam first. Mini beam first. All right. Well, I will roll for the computer's intelligence. It's a very smart computer. Uh, sorry. Intelligence. You have to hit a ten. Your computer does not do that. You do another two damage to the bomb, to the bomber. So His computer is the bomb. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to fire the ion? What I'd like to fire the ion at is the uh, sorry the tentacle. Like at the tentacle. To cause little electric arcs to travel down the tentacle and zap off all the bailings. Which is weird because Don't it's they... not grounded to anything. It's or grounded metal. to the larger body of the mothership. And the separately polarized big thing that it's stabbed into. Okay. By nature, either of the other bodies would have a differing electrical charge, which would generate current if I zapped it with an ion. You're overestimating the conductivity of this tentacle. <laughs> it's alive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's also designed to pierce holes in ships... So, pretty thick. Unless you're telling me these space aliens are composed of non-ionic fluid in their interior, I mean, and going to arc to those and lose. Them. I mean, they they open. Okay, listen. Make a weapons roll. Yes. Natural sixteen. <laughs> okay, listen. The tentacle is non moving. Um, uh, Plus one for my deck score. So, what I'm going to say is, however, because it's covered in little spawnlings, you hit one of the spawnlings. Um, actually, because the ion cannon is rather large, you hit a group. Four or five of them are so discombobulated that they lose their latch on the tentacle and float off into space. Nice. Helping. Helping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Massive combat round time. Oh, once again, the Zoltans seem to be getting the upper hand. Uh, they're doing a substantial amount of damage to the mothership by focusing all of their command ship's power uh, on the mothership. Shoot it um, at the cloaca. The... Uh, there are, let's see, some of the escape pods that have come from the cruiser that's being eaten are maneuvering their way to the other cruisers. Um, however, the mothership is still very angry, and she fires off several more shots. Um, one of them is a weapon you haven't seen before. It's kind of like the little uh, spores that the little fighters shoot, except it's like ten times as big. Um, and she fires a shot at, a, at one of the Zoltan fighters, and it completely destroys it. Just like... The mothership shot this? Yes. Um, sorry, could you, could you do that one more time just for posterity? Yeah, sorry, it was a one-time show. <laughs> uh, one weekend only. In the meantime, she also fires a second tentacle at one of the capital ships, but the capital ship is able to evade it. Phew. It's a fairly slow-moving thing. It's like... Commence tent explosion dodging. Commence tentacle explosion dodging. Engines full ahead. Dive, dive, dive. All right, your turn. I like it. I like it a lot. One second. I'll let Wilberforce go and I'll take my turn in a second. Okay. Wilberforce, go for it. Mini beam at damaged bomber. Uh, your mini beam fired last turn. Oh, yeah. Nuts. Commence explosion yajin. Uh Voltron? He is still not aware of the world around him. Uh, explosion dungeon is commencing. Maintain explosion dungeon. Explosion dungeon. Explosion dungeon. Respectable marshmallow. Well what I'll do is I'll do the mass combat round first. Uh We'll just do another mass combat round and say that, uh, ooh. He's, he's a, holding his turn. He's, we're holding his turn. He can interject at any moment. Um, we're going to say that several Vokar fighters uh, split off of the main group and come straight for you. Uh, you've got three Vokar fighters incoming. All three of them have shot. Oh, dear. One of them. Actually, I am dodging explosions. 
Two of them, one of them, sorry, one of them misses, one of them hits a natural 20, which means you don't get to dodge, uh, but you will get to dodge one. Meanwhile, the first one does, oh, their spore blasters do 2x damage to shields. I'm back. Which means, which means, uh, unfortunately, Don, it means your shields are down. Don't worry, we have shields. You can dot. You can try to dodge the second one, though. I will. Go for it. Plus six. Plus six, and I rolled a seven. That is not good enough to dodge. Uh, you need an eight. You need an eighteen. The spore blaster splats across your windscreen. <laughs> Ew! I turn on the windscreen wipers. Oh! 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 Moto reports, uh, Captain, it appears that this poor blaster weapon does no damage to the ship's hull. Unfortunately, our shields are down for the moment. Hmm. Okay. In shields the... begin recharging now! Shields, shields begin recharging. Uh, Voltron, it's your turn. You're going to get two turns in a row here because we skipped your last turn. Ooh, I, I like that idea. Um, so, what has happened to the tentacle in my absence? Uh, Nothing. You were absent. Nothing. You were absent. The spawnlings are still run skittering along it. I fire the point defense laser at the tentacle. At the tentacle? Yes. Uh, make weapons roll. Six. The... It's at a Let's plus see. Two. It's at a you plus have... two. It's at a plus two, which means it's good enough to hit. Um, however, it doesn't seem to do any damage to the tentacle. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. But isn't the tentacle part of the plot? It's a scripted event. So the plot <laughs> laser should be able to the plot the laser plot. would be strong. <laughs> Plus one to scripted events. <laughs> the plotical? <laughs> the plot. <laughs> plot. Plus, th plus three damage to scripted events. <laughs> right. Uh, well, you get to go again, though, because it's your turn again. Um, hmm. um, I continue firing the point defense cannon at, at the the other the scurrying things on the tentacle because my laser isn't recharged yet, is it? Uh, you got this is your third turn since you shot it. Yep. So no. Shot at four so two. continue firing point plot defense cannon at the <laughs> plot spawnlings. Uh, plot for defense cannon. I like it. Roll for it. Fifteen. Fifteen. Good enough to hit. Wait. Uh, sorry. Um, they do not dodge. You blast away two of the small little spawnlings. <laughs> nice. I radio there. to the uh, capital ship to which the tentacle is attached and say, Hey, guys, you got a tentacle sticking out of your ship and there's little guys running up it. Prepare to be boarded. <laughs> also, get the axes and start hacking away at that tentacle. Cut yourself loose. Get yourself free. Uh, as you do this, you notice that the, the, one, the, the first spawnling that went underneath has now entered the ship through the hole that it caused. You got spawnlings on board. Spawnling didn't cause the hole. I the take issue with your grammar. It. Sorry, the tentacle caused the hole. Okay, that means that Jericho, it is your turn. Is my pew pews recharged yet? Pew pews is recharged. Yay, I pew pew. What do you pew pew? Mini do? beam on damaged bomber. Mini beam on, dam on damaged bomber. Uh. Computer roll is... <laughs> oh. Well, you have to do one damage. The mini beam <laughs> always does at least one damage. And thanks to that, you do at least one probably. damage. Thanks to that, you do at least one damage. Do you like a total to... of five to the bomber. However, you notice that the bomber seems to be struggling to fly straight. It's drunk. Well, no, but it did get hit by an ion cannon several turns ago. That's true. You can fire the ion cannon as well if you'd like. But I would like. Where would you like I to fire like at? 
the, the only electrical be vulnerable enemy in the whole place. There's got to be at least one. Do not fire it at me. Oh. You can fire it at, at, at Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to have affected the mental capabilities of the bomber, but only by a little bit. What if and I over... fired it at the mothership's eye? Ooh, good choice. It'd be pretty easy to hit the mothership, but the eye... Even though it's like a really big eye, you would have to roll pretty high to hit the eye. I want to poke the eye. All right, go for it. Woo! Rolling, rolling, rolling. Does it only have one eye? It's got two eyes. Actually, no. It's got like four eyes. Oh. And so they're like, all... I have a better chance to hit it than I might normally yeah, have. More, it's like more, surface more or less size. gets smaller as it goes forward, and it's got like an eye here, 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 and here. So it's got like... Radial symmetry with the eyes. Interesting. So, according to my d20, I hit eye number four. What What did you roll? I rolled a four. A four. <laughs> um, the ion beam goes... Oh, come on, at least let me hit the mothership. It's the so, size of a capital ship. so unrealistic. There's no sound in space. Well, but remember, your Sad. ships have sound synthesizers. Sad. <laughs> your, sh your ships have sound synthesizers. Make it Big sound. Like... sound. <laughs> oh, this is a, this is a real thing. I read a, I read about it in the novelization of the Star Wars movies. Oh. They talked about why Luke and Han could hear the Tie Fighters when they were finding them in their uh, you know? in their seats. They, he was there was a line that they added in there. Scream in space. This is gonna be a bad Tie joke. Tie Fighter falls in space. Can you hear it scream? Because they missed their mothership. Uh, all right, so it's Just, my turn, right? And uh, honestly, that is a real joke in the Star Wars Legends. <laughs> oh, my word. Who wrote it? Uh, uh, Aaron Olsen, I think. In the meantime, uh, the mothership has decided that she's mad at you. Uh, uh, I can and probably find out. Jericho, she's launched a large missile at you. You're going to have to dodge it, but you can do that when you come back if you want. Uh, because in the meantime... The uh, amazingly enough, and Rebecca Molesta. And now you know. In the meantime, the capital ship that was attached to the tentacle has managed to sever it by firing a beam laser at it. Oh. Um, amazingly enough, axis. leaving leaving the tentacle like drifting in space, and all of the uh, all of the spawnlings either trying to hold on or going. Bloo! Interesting that we have sounds for that already. <laughs> why, why would I? <laughs> Your computers are we extremely have super advanced processing capability to generate sounds, but it can't shoot accurately. Come on, priorities, people. The only sounds they have are. And in the meantime, several of the other capital ships. <laughs> the ships... one sound. <laughs> Every shot was <laughs> missile. <laughs> have, have, are focusing their fire on the mothership. Little aliens and floating off into space. <laughs> they seem to be doing a number. Of, they seem to be doing a good amount of damage to the mothership. It actually appears to be bleeding in several spots. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Uh, Voltron, your turn. So that blood be conductive. I fire the laser. What are you firing at? I'm firing my laser. The mothership's eye. Roll for it. The, the weak eye with all the floaters in it. I rolled a seven. I that is sure good enough to hit. Not good enough to hit the eye. Not good enough to hit the eye, but good enough to do another four damage to the mothership. Take that mothership. <laughs> you um, like can you it. talk to your mothership with that mothership? In addition, you seem to uh, you seem to burst open one of the big pulsating uh, uh, like bubbles that's on the ship's on the mothership's body, Wait, and it goes it, like bubbles on the mothership's body. There's some of them. Maybe that's what I should have aimed for. It goes... You know and a whole bunch... How do you know that wasn't what I was aiming for? A whole bunch of little spawnlings go... <laughs> oh. <laughs> However, um... Oh, wait, sorry. Jericho, your turn. Oh, you have to dodge a missile. Oh, yeah, you have to dodge a missile. Okay, I dodge the missile. Now... After I've dodged the missile. Roll for your dodge, you bum. I rolled a six, but I also have a plus six, because I'm an explosion agent. 
Let's see if Amy can dodge it. Oh, Amy dodges it, makes a natural 20. The missile, the missile's guidance system fails as you spurt forward with an incredible burst of speed. It whips around your ship and hits the uh, wounded uh, bomber that you've been shooting at. The, uh, How much damage does that do? The, uh, uh, two. the engine's crew are really coming through today. Amy has always been awesome. But I mean, that's she, why she had the Amy title of Kate. Dodge roll, and my engineer, Stephen Albert, made a good dodge roll. So, my in, in, of course. In the mass combat round, ooh, in the mass combat round, the Vokar seem to uh, have identified your ships as threats, and you're both going to have to outfly a Vokar runner that is trying to latch onto your hull. I have a plus one in navigation and a 12 in dex, and I'm explosion yajin. Uh, that gives you plus what? Six? Six. Well, you'll be at a minus two to dodge because these things are large and sentient. How large? Well, large enough to bite onto your ship. Large okay. enough to count as capital ships? No. Sorry, dude. <laughs> but you just thought you'd check anyway. Well, it's okay. good thing to check. I commence large and sentient ship eating dodging. Um, I also I the nine plus six makes fifteen. Fifteen is not quite good enough. Oh, amazingly enough, Amy rolls a natural eighteen, which is good enough to outrun the runner. Amy bails <laughs> out again. Amy is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, Sladen rolls a fifteen. Which at the minus two penalty is not enough. Wait, but we've got and... like a plus four from the engines. Oh, wait, count. that's right, you do. No, but that's only for the engine roll. That only counts on the engine roll, um... which is Albert's roll. No, or does it count for both? I thought the I... engines counted for both, but you don't I get think... the plus one for manning the engines in the in the pilot's roll. He's also got uh, plus right. one because he's piloting it, so it should be at a plus five, oh, which would plus give five him minus two. Be plus three, which is eighteen, which means he manages to outmaneuver it. Aha. Excellent work. Thank Excellent you. Excellent work. Voltron, your turn. My turn. Uh, as we're speeding away from the battle, um, I hail the alien mothership with our comm laser and say, "Sucker." Can't catch us. We're too fast for you. Do you actually shoot the comm laser at the bad. at the mothership? Of course I do. Oh boy. Mm. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. I mean, uh, I don't know if I can open a channel or something. I don't think Jericho. Can... It's your <laughs> turn. He's trying to get used to the idea that he's not going to get a new ship after all. That's very depressing. (laughs) Uh, It's been two turns since I lost my shield, so I should have a shield recharged by now. Um, Do you have anybody in the shield room? No. I have four power and shields. Um. I think should be enough for two shields. Uh... It takes five turns for your shield to return. Hmm. Yeah, I should have put some of his shields. Well, but and that gets decreased if you have somebody in there, uh-huh. and then etc. Okay. Well, um, are my pew pews recharged? Uh, oh, only the ion beam because you didn't fire it last time. Oh wait, no, you did. I totally just did. Sorry, just kidding. They're not recharged okay. yet. And 10 explosion dodging. And 10 explosion dodging. I hope you're keeping track of that. Uh, mass combat round. What do you mean keeping track of it? Of course I'm keeping track of it. Uh, well, um, Phil, your uh, com, uh, excuse me, Voltron, your comm laser seems to have had an interesting effect on the uh, mothership. Uh, oh, she boy. has begun turning in your direction. Yes. Which Wait, means, you're happy about this? Yes. Which means that the capital ship in her mouth is also turning your direction. Yes. She is trying to hit you with a ship the size of Kentucky. Yeah, we're basically which, out of the combat zone right now because we had to run away from that runner, so we're fine. You're still very much in the combat zone. <laughs> we're that still far. very much in the combat zone, apparently. Which means both of you are going to have to make some piloting and engine rolls to avoid this thing. Perfect. 
Great. I thought we were farther away. Roll to avoid Kentucky. <laughs> roll to avoid Kentucky. Um, uh, make a piloting roll and let me tell me what you get. Once Both again, of you simultaneously. Once again, plus I'm six. Not in the piloting room. Uh, then Slayton will make a piloting room. Oh dear, piloting roll. He's going to take two strain to re-roll that. Can I also yeah. take two strain to re-roll this? Uh, yes. Good. Your strain is determined by your level of strength. So whatever your level of strength is, that's your amount of strain that you have. And it takes two strain to re-roll a roll like that. Your second roll, however, you, you're stuck. <laughs> what did you roll the second time? Please. A seven. Ooh. It's well, better than I rolled the first time. Well, it's better than Lauren Sladen's, Lauren Sladen's one. Yikes. Critical fail. Which, so much for the ship. Which means several things happen all at once. Wait, don't we uh, get engine rolls too? <laughs> nah, the, the Durango gets an engine roll. And the Epic Falcon also gets an engine roll, right? Nope. Why nope, not? it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because if you're just going faster, it means you do more damage to the Durango when you hit it. Uh, what? Wait, what? <laughs> you drove into me? What? We were going in different directions. I was flying away from the battle. This is what happens when you well, have that maniac drive. I'll tell you this. He would have ran into you, but Amy managed to save your bacon. Oh, jeez. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> in this case, it means that uh, by going faster, you went a little off of your intended course. And hold on, I'm going to make a couple more rolls here. Oh, oh, oh. And the Vokar runner that was chasing you caught up with you, and latched its mouth around the entire left engine. Wait, we have more than one engine? Yeah, the, remember the Durango? The picture of the Durango? Oh. Wait, you've got, Durango, like, the... Oh, he caught up with the Durango, not to the Falcon. The Durango has, like, the two engines on the outside, like, the... And he just latched his mouth around one of them. Can I send my utility droid out to unlatch his mouth? Um... Well, we'll see what happens your next turn. I, ex um, I extend the landing gear. <laughs> <laughs> this is all your fault. Shoot the Voltron, runner it is... with the plot defense cannon. Uh, Voltron, it is your turn. Um, but if you want to get out of the way of the ship that's still coming your way, um, well, let's see. Oh, we're burning like hell for the other side of the solar system right now. Well, fortunately, Stephen Albert in your engine room makes a critical success, uh, and so he gives your engines enough juice to get out of the way of the engine, to get out of the way of the capital ship. Right, but oh, I have a, I do oh, have a now you survive after you stuffed my ship's tailpipe up the mouth I, of an alien. I do have a plus two to evade against capital ships, so I feel like that should have been factored in. Oh, yeah, you do. Well, it's all right. You evade it anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> capital, capital, capital even though ship. it's a capital ship being thrown physically at me, I feel like I should still be able to evade it. I don't just have plus one against ranged attacks made by a capital yes, ship. Yes. I have plus one against... Melee attacks made with the capital ship. <laughs> Melee attacks made with a capital ship. By a capital ship. With a capital ship. For the capital ship. <laughs> so say we all. You're rid of the capital ship. By the capital ship. And for the capital ship. Oh, you managed to have made it. It is your turn. You, uh, I don't think the your weapon is recharged yet, though. I'll shoot the point defense cannon at the, at the runner on the Durango. Uh, in order to do that, you would have to fly back into the path of the capital ship. I don't shoot the platform cannon <laughs> at the Durango, and instead I hail Wilberforce on the Durango and be like, Hey, uh, listen. And I start whispering at this point, Lawrence, Lawrence is piloting this thing, not me. <laughs> um, so sorry... I'm really sorry that we almost... I will dock either. both of your pay later. Just point listen, the comm laser at the runner. I point... I Listen, just... You've got a runner that's, like, on your engine? I and am I think aware. if you reroute all of the engine power to the left engine, you might be able to burn it off. You know what I mean? Or you could stab it with the comm laser and get it to let go. What do you want me to do? Talk it down? This is you saw what happened when you comm laser the main mothership. This thing's not big enough to turn my ship on its own. Oh, is... Is... Is that what did it? 
I was just stunting on her. <laughs> Cause and effect. <laughs> well, this is why I am captain. <laughs> this is, you know, this explains a lot. Because every time I shoot the comm laser at you, you end up being angry too. So... <laughs> Do Maybe you know that when you pull thing. the trigger on your weapons, it shoots a beam of coherent energy at whatever you're aiming at? Uh, duh. Effect. Yeah, but it's, my weapon's not recharged yet, so I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah, but your comm laser is. My comm laser is unfortunately working very well. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's um, quite a I shoot a comm laser... <laughs> In, attempt, in an attempt to contact the runner that's attached to the Durango. And I say, hey, you filthy mongrel. Your mama's got a busted kneecap. <laughs> and her teeth are ugly. And I blew up her epiglottis. You missed her epiglottis you, so far. You never made it down her you, mouth. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed of your family. Ashamed of your ancestors. <laughs> and also, you're ugly. And you're not even fast. Like, you're just literally designed to be fast, and you're not even fast. You can't even do that right. You had one job. <laughs> J Jericho. I hope you feel bad. I hope you go home tonight and can't sleep because of how stupid you look and how slow you were today. Your performance was just, frankly, embarrassing. To everybody involved. Don't show your face here again. You hear me? Just go. <laughs> and the award for best impromptu monologue by a player goes to... <laughs> oh boy. Trash talk game is pretty strong today, man. Uh, Jericho, is there anything you'd like to do on your turn? <laughs> <laughs> what he said. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty good. I gotta, I gotta say it. Thank you. That was pretty amazing. I have 13 charisma, so... I think that, that doesn't count for something. Uh, that should count for something. <laughs> I feel like it should. Okay. On my turn, am I still in the path of the Kentucky-sized ship? Yes. I would like to remove myself from the path of the Kentucky-sized ship. Make a piloting roll. Okay. Is this plus six, or does my attempt to evade things not count? Uh, you're at a minus four. So, uh, plus two. Plus two. I'm okay with that. You have a, you have a thing on your, on your wheel. I rolled a 91. Very funny. What did you actually roll? Oh, it's a 16. Oh, uh, just barely. Plus two makes 18. A 16? Yeah. Oh. I rolled a 16. Oh. Makes 18. Yeah, here we go. Which is able to, like, start going in circles. And, like, slowly move... Out of the path of the massive capital ship. Hey, hail Wilberforce. Are you drunk? <laughs> Are you drunk? Your ship is going in circles. However, the folk are <laughs> at your strange... My butt. The folk are that is attached to your ship uh, seems to go into uber rage mode. Yes. <laughs> and begins shaking incredibly violently. Yes. You can... Imagine that it must have been Voltron's impassioned speech that has caused it to go into a ridiculous combat rage. It begins violently twisting and gnawing at your left engine. Okay. <laughs> Engines to fall. Burn the thing off. Um, well, the problem is it doesn't let go with its jaw. Which means that it eventually wrenches itself free of your ship and takes about half of the engine with it. Oh my gosh. I still have 1.5 engines. I imagine this that. Causes, this causes a breach in the engine room, which is where Kaylee is at the moment. Oh my god. Oh no. Fortunately, she's fixing that. 
She can get right on fixing that, although um, right that. it does mean that the oxygen is falling out, as it were. Yes. Falling falling out here. The oxygen is falling out. Uh, unfortunately, because she's awesome, she fixes everything. Fortunately, the Sultan are making incredible pro- progress in, sh- in shooting the mothership, um, and it seems to be visibly weakening. In fact, it's almost relinquished awesome. a hold on the capital ship that it is hurling nice. through space. Nice. Uh, so, Voltron, it is your turn. Is my laser up yet? No. I feel like nope. it should be. No, you shot at the eye like two turns ago. I think it was three turns ago. It was three turns ago, which means you've got two more turns so you can shoot. Oh my gosh, this thing is a piece of junk. Why Whatever. does it take so long to get recharged? Why don't you hit things with it? I uh, continue to burn away from battle as quickly as possible, flinging a stream of obscenities and <clears throat> vulgar remarks at the runner and um, calling into question his parentage and the authenticity of his lineage, etc., etc., <laughs> among other things that I can think of. Um, <laughs> Can you? Uh, and I continued. I also fired the plot defense laser at it, just as a show of force. Just as a show of force. Just to make okay. sure it knows that I'm serious and that I'm not going to give up. Plot laser. Uh, as plot he runs laser. away. Um. You're what? too far away for it to be effective. But I, I, that's, that's okay. That's not the point. It's, it's just like a scare tactic. He doesn't know that though. I know that. Scare, which is a scare, scare tactic. tactic. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, well. And if he does get in range, it might do something. I don't know. Maybe he'll give us some blood. Maybe he'll give you some blood. Jericho, your turn. What is the runner <laughs> doing right now, by the way? Uh, the runner is flying towards you with half of the Durango's en- left engine in its mouth. It's got to slow him down a little bit, wouldn't you think? Yeah, gives him a lot more inertia. I will shoot him with the ion cannon to slow him down further. Yeah, make an engine roll. Or weapons roll, sorry. I'm not shooting him with the engine. He has my engine. <laughs> shoot, shoot him with the engine. <laughs> Can you remember that part of the wep- of the engine? I wish. My engineer that would tell me if that's possible is presently fixing a hole in my ship. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. So, I'll make, I'll make her to shoot her. Uh... What'd you roll? Um, about that. What'd you roll? Uh, I rolled for Amy's repair, and she's doing a great job. In one more turn, she'll have the the hole p- patched up. Awesome. Nice. Because you rolled a one. Incidentally, that's the same number of bips on the die I rolled. Uh, you were shooting at the Voker. Please, God, don't hit me. Which means that you were firing directly at the ship no, wasn't. currently in. Um, and, no, uh, not necessarily. You hit the shields of the epic rapt- raptor. <laughs> Which means they go down to two. Two? I've got four! <laughs> exactly. Ion does double damage to shields, remember? <laughs> you're down, now you're down to two shields. Oh, no. Um, I, let's see. Sorry. How many turns do we have? Hold on. How many turns? I do still we have, have the mini beam, the... though. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't get to the shield room and get back to the weapons room in time, so I'll just stay in weapons, I guess. I still well, have the mini beam, and I would like to finish blowing up the bomber. Shoot the runner. Oh wait, is the mini beam up this turn? Oh yeah, they it is. Come up at the same time. Yeah, they do. You can shoot the mini beam at the at whatever you want. I want to shoot. The darkness. You guys don't know that reference, okay? I cast mini beam missile at the darkness. Um. Okay. I guess I'm gonna try to hit the engine part in the runner's mouth to make it blow up. <laughs> I don't believe this, but your computer is really bad at rolling. Computer comes um, through. The, the mini beam 
If it survives. Oh, the mini beam also issue. strikes the epic raptor. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, because the epic raptor still has shields, the mini beam does nothing. I don't believe it. Jeez. <laughs> it <laughs> one. You should be embarrassed. Uh, could, yes. You're the one that bought a, a ship painting kit instead of an AI upgrade, so... Good news. Actually, that wasn't for sale. Zoltan fleet rolls a natural 20, and that's all they needed to finish off the mothership. Oh, is, is, that, massive, all? is that all they need? Hey, Their massive capital ship weapons finally have sliced through her body, and she dies in an, an incredibly impressive display of exploding guts throughout know, space. If it was that simple to kill this thing... Why did they need the whole super complex here take my lunch money plot? I'd have rolled a twenty long ago if I'd have known that's all we needed. Well, they needed one more twenty. Oh. Um, with the mothership dead, the Vokar's uh, forces begin to scatter. Uh, if you want, we can play out all of that combat where you uh, find the, uh, or at least you can take a few more shots at the la at the runner that's chasing you, or we can just say that. Engine back. Or that we could just say that the uh, fleet is able to mop up the rest of them. Um, you can say that the fleet is able to mop up the rest of them, but make a note that <laughs> <laughs> make a note that I continue to thoroughly embarrass the runner until his uh, eventual ill-fated death at the hands of either our ship or some other ships. But just be sure that he died um, completely embarrassed. And really disrespected. So we disrespected all over him before he. I died. will make a note. Yeah. I will make a note. Okay. But like a sixteen. How note, you win is not sometimes the just answer. as important as if. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the Zoltan are incredibly grateful um, for your help. They help after the battle. They allow. They help you to move all of your stuff from your old ship, which is now. Half a weapon, half a ship down to your new ship, which means that if you like, you can install your other three le weapons and the cloaking system in the Epic Raptor. Yeah. I also, I also would like to install Modar on the DL in the new ship. Oh yes, he can, he can handle that. I mean, Modar can, Modar can. Uh, okay. You can probably pull him off. You can probably pull him off on a flash drive and just plug him in. He was probably hiding on the cloaking system. <laughs> uh, heavy laser. Mark one, two, and three. Oops, hold on. One and two. Two. Sorry, I'm just writing all this stuff down. I should have written, the, written this down earlier. Okay. All right. Which means that you're going to have to reallocate some of your power. Mm -hmm. You've got one tier two weapon and three tier one weapons. Okay. Which means can... if all of those running, you're going to have to have two, three, four, five power in weapons. I take a power out of the plot laser because we're not going to need that again. I don't think. Okay. Um, we've got 16. 16 total. You'll need five to run your weapons. We should put five in weapons. Okay. Which gives us 11. So we should put... Oh, wait, five in weapons would give us not 11. Don't we have 16? But we have six... Oh, I see what you're saying. We have six, five, 11 left over. Yes. 11 left over to sw split between shields, weapons... Or sorry, between shields, engines, cloaking, and if you want, the defense cannon. How much does cloaking take? Uh, Just one. It's got a max of two. Two will give you... Um, if you put in two power into cloaking... Oh. I read that wrong. You can put up to three in cloaking if you want. What if we Dep put... Depending on your speed, the speed you want of recharge. And the dist and the time of cooking. What if we put one in cloaking and then five in shields and engines? So five, 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 and one in the cloak. The problem is, 
Um, it's better to have an even number in engines, because then you can get another plus one to dodge. So yeah. if we took get down to four inch shields, giving us two shields. Is... We'd have three shields. Yeah. Three shields. Yeah, because it's two for the first one, and then an additional one for every power after that. So that's three shields, and we can put six in engines. Okay Do that. we keep the engine and sensor upgrades that we had installed on the Durango? Sorry, those st stay with ship. Okay. Cool. Oh. I mean, and by the way, the oh, I was just gonna say that your diagnostics test with the with the Epic Raptor is finally finished. Oh yeah. What are the res what are the results? Um, it says there might be some issues with the hyperdrive. Oh, well, that's a good thing I ran that diagnostics before we tried to <laughs> jump out of here. Uh, it's, it's, it says that you're uh, about 60,000 light years over regular hyperdrive maintenance. Oh, my gosh. Is that all? Amy. <laughs> oh, look at this hyperdrive. Let's see. That's, oh, wow. Amy. <laughs> Amy says that it's probably only got a couple more jumps left in it before you're going to need to replace the negative power coupling. Uh, they gave us a lemon. Gosh. Hey, while we're at the grateful fleet that helped us, we should probably see if we can buy a negative power coupling. They don't have any negative power couplings to fit this ship. Remember, they picked Do they have up? a positive power coupling that we could turn around? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how it works. You just <laughs> whip it around. Put it in the Let Amy fix the ship. About Let Amy fix the ship. <laughs> Amy's like, put, wow. Put that wrench down in the force. If you think if it was that easy, they would have thought of it long ago. We got lots of positive power couplings sitting around. Yeah, lots of positive power couplings. No one knows what to do with them. Maybe you could insult it so it loses its positivity. <laughs> um, you can't get one here, is all I'm saying. But you are free to go. Right. I'm going to go, and I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Oh, and they patch up your... The, uh... They patch up the Epic Raptor for you, healing the hull points that you lost. Your shields recharge, and uh, the crew is able to fix the um, breach. Hmm, I just had an idea. Hooray! Let's see. Uh, excuse me. It's not good. I just had a good idea, which I think would be a good idea. No, I think it would be a good idea. I think it'll make things better. I think it'll make combat more enjoyable anyway. Yeah, we got that. We got that. This goodbye, Vokar Mothership. You were dead. Boom! She dead. She dead. All right. Well, you guys have a new ship. Yay! The that is totally not the Millennium Falcon because it's painted red. Uh, it's yeah, it's dark red. It's like maroon. It's not the Millennium Falcon. It doesn't look like that at all. The, it's epic, the epic Raptor, anyway. The Epic Raptor. Although I did like Century Hawk. It's too bad it's a Sparrow Hawk class. Yeah. That's okay. And Epic you guys, it is. And you decided you're going to go with four power and shields? Yeah? And six in engines. Four and six in engines? And are you putting any in cloaking? One. One in cloaking. Okay, that means... Uh, that means That's you'll have... All of our power. Turn, two turns of cloak and six turn, turns of recharge. Here I am. All right. Ready to continue? Have we gotten in a battle since I left? Uh, no. Oh, thank goodness. Um, yeah. Okay. Continue. So, um, we've got about enough for two hyperspace jumps? Uh, she says maybe three or four. Okay. So let's make one jump to the mystery MacGuffin at the end of the rainbow, and then we can jump back. Hopefully. And get the hyperdrive fixed. So you're jumping to the space, you're making an FTL jump to the space, to space northeast? Yes. Yes, northeast where the compass points. Ah, yes. Let me just show you the planet that you arrive at. I'm planet. putting it on the planet. 
This is the planet Tarni. It is an Engi controlled planet. You can see it on the Google chats. Tarni. Tarni? How do you. S oh, there it is. I was like, how do you spell that? But... I was a space adventurer like you, but then I took a tar to the knee. <laughs> It has a large ice cap in the southern pole, but there's really not much ice to speak of at the northern pole. Yeah, the pole. say tar. Me. Me. Oh, that's a lot of ocean. Oh, yeah, it's, it's an incredible amount of ocean. And most of the landmass, you can see, is in the northern hemisphere. Um, if you'd like, you can fly around the planet a couple times and see if the compass will give you a spot-on reading of... Well, I like exactly that. That's a good idea. Don't make a piloting roll. 27. Wait, we're going into atmosphere... But I, unless you don't want to. Okay. Fair. I should not have used these dice tonight. What did you I roll? Rolled a two. You can take two strain to re-roll that. We're going into atmosphere, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this time I rolled a thirteen. A thirteen. That is good enough to find out that the compass is pointing at what your scans indicate is like a stone structure in the middle of a jungle. Uh, what looks like about half a day's walk away from. Uh, a local spaceport slash town. Mm. Good, probably. Um, Can we route one power from the cloaking to the plot defense cannon? Okay. Idea. I want to check in with Motor and see if he is okay with landing on this NG world, or if we should kind of land out of town and not reveal that we have an NG on board. Uh, Motor says that as long as he stays in court, um, sorry, as long as I remain in this state, the NG authorities will not be able to detect me. Cortana mode. It's okay. We know. Okay. Can we, like, take him along on a floppy disk or something? Um, what would you do with it? He says, this is possible, but I would be largely useless. Uh, well, I mean, so no different. <laughs> Ouch! He says, I believe that is an attempt at humor. <laughs> no, are known for such really jokes. isn't. However, Engies are incapable of understanding them. Hmm. Please state your meaning more clearly. Well, not with that attitude, they're not. Uh, he also says, uh, Captain Jericho, have you discerned the nature of the object inside of the small wooden box? That's a good question. Wait, should we land first I think and it's then about open it, time. or are we going to open it first and then land? I think we should open it before we land. Okay. You open it before I you land. open the box! You open the box. The thing you see inside is... Uh, hold on. No, stop. Stop. Incredibly valuable. Is this thing. Right, stop that. There we oh, go. This thing. It's a this thing, I say. Oh. A small glowing crystal thing with a strange rune on it. That's not strange. That's a horde symbol. Oh, you notice... I've seen that somewhere before. You notice that it glows when your hand... when you when you It glows when touched. And as you hold it and sort of wave it around, you notice that... Because of uh, course I do. Under the light of this small glowing object, ancient runes are revealed on the wooden box. Yeah. I say, Dr. Stephen Albert, yeah, renowned right? archaeologist, what do these ancient runes say? Um, he begins to, he takes the box in his, in his awkward mantis man, uh, things, <laughs> hands, they're not really hands, his claws, and begins to read him. He says, may this light illuminate many hidden things to its Wearer. Wearer? I equip it. At the moment, Jeeves happens to be standing over his, looking over his shoulder. He says, uh, Dr. Albert, excuse me, but I believe that last word is bearer. <laughs> Dr. Albert says, well, yes, of course. May this light illuminate many things to its bearer. How do you speak ancient crystal? <laughs> uh, Jeeves says, I remind you that I am programmed in over six million forms of communication. It is my primary function. <laughs> It yes, like well, I'm sure. Primary function is, remi is, is reminding <laughs> us that you're fluent in over six million more than uh, Yes, well, as somebody who hasn't studied the language, I'm sure you're not. A f you're sure you're not familiar with all of the nuances of its use. That's actually Albert is a little defensive. Okay. I gathered. Thank you, Doctor Stephen Albert, renowned archaeologist and royal archaeologist to the planet Atlantis and the king thereof. Bad news. Oh, never mind. I news. deeply appreciate your translation. And I will now bear the glue. And I will consummately ignore it, because that's what I do. I am adding to my inventory glowy globe of bearing. 
Or Chloe Globe of Barry. Is the one is one up here somewhere. Motar is able to Motar is able to inform you that the, the town you'll be landing near is somewhat of a tourist trap. Okay, do we land without incident? Uh, if you'd like to land, yes. In fact, you're like welcome. You're welcomed by a friendly by a friendly Engi who encourages you to visit uh, the local shops in the street market before making any sort of touristy adventures. Any sort of touristy, touristy adventures. adventures. I say, noble Engi, who has the guy that's talking to us, is saying, "Hey, you should check out the shops." I this say... recording will end in five seconds. Five, four, oh. three, two, one. Boom. Well, that was fun. So what? Wait. Apparently, apparently the tourist department is largely run by recording these days. Interesting. I go, Slow day, I suppose. I go to the uh, the market street, and I. It's a sunny day, on Tarni, and you are in currently in the city of Gerba. Oh, Gerba Tarni. Gerba. You will notice that it's that kind of hot. It's kind of hot, <laughs> not quite. It's very, it's very hot and muggy. You're near the equator, uh, and you're the town is surrounded by jungle. I say, I say to the nearest vendor, I say, is there a place I can get a where a wealthy off-worlder might get a jungle tour? <laughs> uh, the Angi says, "You are in luck." I am the purveyor of a small tour operation. However, my main function is to serve as a potion salesman. Uh, do, are you also a potion We have led to the planet of the singing Engi. <laughs> what did you ask him? <laughs> Jericho, you, do you say that out loud? Are you perhaps also a purchaser of potions? I say it to myself. Okay. I am a vendor of potions okay. in all types. I buy... And so, however, today we are having a 50% off sale on our variety of potions. What what uh, sort of potions do you have for sale? I have a number of helpful and useful potions for any wealthy off-worlder who is looking to travel into the jungle. What do they do? I have a health potion and a stamina potion and a... Ooh, potion of attractiveness a potion. and a potion of strength and a potion of dexterity and a potion of intelligence and a potion of resist fire and a potion of resist poison and a potion of resist ice. <laughs> Are there any that you would like to purchase today? I think we better take them all. <laughs> Are you suggesting you would like to buy one of each? It sounds like you no, only have one of these. Your whole inventory. That is incorrect. I am well stocked in all of these potions. Oh. Um, Business has been slow of late. Why the scourge that? of the Vokar. The uh, scourge of the Vokar. The scourge of the Vokar, right? Yes, yeah, scourge of the Vokar. It has limited again. tourism to our fair world. Um, I have great news for you regarding the scourge of the Vokar. Is killed. the scourge of the Vokar ended? We killed one of the Thoroughly motions, eliminated. so they're likely to focus their entire military force on this branch of the galaxy for the time being, so... No, the mothership was Sorry. the whole source of the fleet. We blew the mothership up. How many motherships do they have, Wilberforce? The that is wonderful news! Disarray. Don't you remember talking to the Zoltan? Like, the whole deal was the mothership. All of their larger ships were organized and communicated through the mothership. Yeah, but how many motherships are out there? We don't know. One. You hope? There's only one in this sector, because the Zoltan investigated the sector you extensively. Hope. More could show up at any time, that's all I'm saying. This guy. Um, well, listen, uh, guy, how much does each of these potions cost? Um, he says, um, he says, one moment while I access my memory banks. <laughs> I'm really hoping he has, like, a sign that he can hand us. <laughs> a sign? Uh, no, he appears to only communicate verbally. Um, the potion of healing costs 20 scrap. The potion ah, yes. of strength 
costs. <laughs> if they all cost 20 scrap, I'm just going <laughs> to walk away. They're all like one says, scrap difference. Today, we are having a 50% off sale. <laughs> you said that already. Business, business has been slow because of the scourge of the Vokar. Right, scourge of the Vokar, yes. What are the Today, prices? The health potion can be yours for only 5 scrap a piece. The stamina potion similarly can be bought for 5 scrap. <laughs> The potion of attractiveness is now 10 scrap because of the 50% off deal. The potion of strength is also 10 scrap. The potion of dexterity is 15 scrap. The potion of intelligence Why is 10 scrap. This? <laughs> the potions of resist fire, poison, and ice are all priced at 5 scrap. Um, I'll take a resist poison. And... Um, a resist fire. How much scrap do we have? And a potion of attractiveness. You need like three of those, dude. I have a total of 26 scrap. Um, like tradable actual items. So. He says, if you wish, you may choose to open a charge account at a local NG bank. You know, I am equipped with all of the necessary equipment to begin your credit no, line today. No, that's okay. Um, maybe next time. Those uh, who open a credit line today can receive an additional 10% off. <laughs> no, that's okay. I just want... I spend all of our scrap on potions. Yeah, well, if you, we're going into the jungle. What if we get poisoned? I'm getting a resist poison, a resist fire, and a an attractiveness potion. And I want to sell four of my healing potions. Why and an attractiveness potions? An attractiveness yeah. potion. Those are 10 scrap, right? Those were yeah, 15. Those... those are 10. The dexterity was 15. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Poison is, poison is 5. Fire is 5. The attractiveness is 10. So that's uh, 20 scrap. Perfect. And now what do I get for selling the four healing potions? Um, because they're half off, not much. Uh, he says he says he'll give you fifteen for the for the four healing potions. Marvelous. We'll take it. Oh, that's actually not bad. So I have uh, fifteen plus six is twenty-one. All right. I walk off. He says, "Are you planning to travel to the jungle?" I stop dramatically, look over my shoulder, and say, what do you know about the jungle? The jungle is a very dangerous place. It is not advised to travel any further than is necessary from a clear path to a vista. At least not without some of my home-crafted, gluten-free, free-range, non-synthetic, non-GMO health potions made from scratch here in my shop without the use of MSG, artificial growth hormones, insecticides, pesticides, radioactive isotopes, or trans fats. I'm glad you're concerned about <laughs> environmentalism. Um, listen, I, we did a scan of the area on the way in, which is great. So we've got this map, and I hold out um, the printout that we did before. It's like it's like a bunch of nine by eleven pages that are like <laughs> taped together on like a satellite image <laughs> yeah and i've i've marked the spot that the compass was pointing us to on the map and i say this is where we're trying to get to can you help us get there it says as it happens i am the purveyor of a traveling and tourism right, company right, called right. derba tours i would glad to give you a tour to the vista point is that is that he points, the Vista Point? So he points to the map, and you see that there's like a trail leading up, kind of up this little mountain next to the village, and it leads up to a certain point where it looks like you know there would maybe be a vista. The point you're pointing at is uh, farther up the mountain from that. It looks like it's mostly rough jungle from that point up. Okay. Okay. So can we get to this point from the vista, or are you just authorized to take us to the vista and then what? I am only authorized to take you to the vista and back. Okay, and if I we... am only authorized to take you to the vista and back. 
Okay. Oh boy. Thank you. <laughs> it is. I will be incredibly attractive. That's... I cannot advise you to travel any further than that without severe risk to life and limb. Okay, I understand that, and I am fully culpable in any risks that may occur on this trip. Your party will only need to sign this waiver form. Of course, there's a waiver form, yes. You know, I tell you what, what if we find a find an Please inn? sign your waiver! You know, we're not leaving yet, alright? Okay, I haven't agreed to anything. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna go find a place to stay the night. I'm gonna get some shut eye, cause I can through. recommend a number of stop. hotels to you. Just stop. <laughs> We've just been through a pretty nasty space battle, and I'm ready to get some space sleep, if you know what I mean. Uh, for, uh, let's see, for for five scrap, your party can stay the night at a local hotel and have your health and stamina refreshed. Boom. Doing it. I'll even flip okay, the so. bill. What a guy. Uh, I'm, uh, let's see. Getting, I'm getting so I'm slowing down. It's time to go. Time to go? I think so. All right. I think this would be a good place to wrap up because I don't know if I'm ready to climb the mountain yet. <laughs> I can understand that. Huzzah! Huzzah! Well, we can pick up tomorrow. Uh, next time we can pick up with the next morning. Awesome. That sounds great to me. Hooray. Hooray for victory. Good work, you guys.